Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the technical session 7B of the Great European Congress in 2021. Case study and know high application, success and failure for real practice. I hope you enjoyed the other technical session and that you can take a virtual look around Madrid. It's a pity that it's a pandemic situation has not allowed us to enjoy our excellent Spanish food and drink. Now it's raining in Madrid. I'm Francisco Guisado. I work in Rosol, a multi-energy company, and in particular in asphalt as technical, technical assistant and business development. I'm involved in the technical committee Eurobitumen and in different working groups, as well as Spanish representative in the European Standardization Committee for Bitumen and Modified Bitumen. I now participate in the technical organization committee of the EE 2021 Congress. I am a chair of this session. Okay. This session is divided in two blocks. The three presentation is one, which is a Q&A session. And at the end of the each of them, where the presenter will be able to answer your question. Please send your question using these little chats, who our question is directed to. And then I want to pass on the question to the speaker. In this session, we have three European nationality, Danish, German, and Spanish. Thank you so much for your participating. In the first block, they will present us real aspect about asphalt mixture with low rolling resistance, asphalt mixture with warm mist technology, and rehabilitation on a highway with recycled mices. The person who are involved in the first block, Dr. Matteo Petinari from Denmark, Mr. Ulrich Lübe, and Mr. Volker Suffer for Germany. And the second block, they will be showing action and development for bituminous mixes for railway tracks and combine a system of mice with modified bitumen and hilsonite. The person who are involved are Mr. Rafael Martinez and Dr. Miguel Sol Sanchez from Andalusia, Spain, and Mr. Nak Johansen for Germany. Let's go to the first block of presentation. Excuse me, is I don't mean if presentation any of your names. The first one is Implementation of low rolling resistant pavement in Denmark by Dr. Matteo Petinari, paper 147. Mr. Matteo is a specialist in bitumen and asphalt mixture and work in the pavement division at the Danish Road Directory of Research. His recent research activities mainly focus on the study of both mechanical and functional property of low rolling resistant pavement. We are to enjoy the Danish Road Directory. Dr. Matteo Pinitari works as a postdoc at the Technic Technical University of Denmark, is studying the mechanical response of low roll rolling resistant asphalt mixture. He wrote his doctorate on performance characterization of low environmental impact of asphalt mixture. Dr. Petinari is also leading a project focused on the road condition assessment based on data from connecting cars. Lira, he has worked package leader on a project called Road Saving Energy, ROSE, funded by the Nice Innovation Foundation. Several publications have been written by Dr. Petinari about the analysis of low rolling resistant pavement and performance characterization of asphalt mixture. I will give the floor to Mateo. Mateo, they are all yours. Welcome everyone. My name is Mateo Petinari and I work as a special consultant at the Danish Road Directorate. Today I will talk about the implementation of low rolling resistance pavements in Denmark. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the co-authors of this paper, and also I would like to thank the Danish Road Directorate for giving me the opportunity of presenting this work at the EuroAS for Eurovitamin. The outline of the presentation is summarized in this slide. I will give a short introduction to what pavement rolling resistance is, and then I will describe the demonstration project, giving a special focus to the mix design and material properties, to the paving operation, in particular, the use of the infrared camera, and then I will uh, show some of the surface properties or functionalities of the pavement that uh, we have obtained from the different uh, constructions. So what is the pavement rolling resistance? We can say that uh, the surface properties of a pavement have a very strong impact on rolling resistance and approximately 15% of the fuel consumption is caused by rolling resistance. 
the properties that have an impact on it are the surface texture and the longitudinal uneveness. In fact, both generate vibration and viscoelastic deformations in the tires and uh, also in the suspension system. And this uh, reduces the energy efficiency of the motion. The Danish Road Directorate has started back in 2012 a very long journey in trying to optimize the mixed gradation of a stone mastic asphalate with the, the objective to uh, reduce uh, fuel consumption and consequently CO2 emissions. Uh, from 2012 until 2016, many different test sections and trial sections have been paved, were paved and monitored, and uh, all this iterative process has led us into uh, a mix which we have uh, accepted and uh, starting from 2018, we ha have tried to, we have started uh, to implement. Uh, and uh, for this implementation process, we have called the contractors uh, to a demonstration phase. Four contractors have participated and four different uh, sections were paved. Three on uh, motorways and one on a national road. Uh, a total, uh, totally, they have paved approximately 35 kilometers of lanes. With regard to the mix design, we have given to the contractors the recommendation on how to produce uh, uh, a climate-friendly pavement, so to how to produce a low texture depth and a durable mix. So we have suggested to lower degradation compared to a standard uh, and make and produce a finer mix compared to a standard tone mastic asphalate. This implies also the use of higher binder content. To make sure that the, the, the mortar was resistant, we also given we have given to the contractor some suggestions about the filler content and also about the, the type of binder to use in order to lower the risk of permanent deformation. We have measured the impact of these properties on the indirect and size stiffness modulus and also on the rotting resistance using the wheel tracking test. Uh, we have looked, we expected to have uh, the indirect and size stiffness modulus at 10 degrees C in the order of magnitude of 5000 megapascal, but that was not always the case. And uh, on the other side, uh, the, uh, the, the permanent deformation resistance results were uh, quite satisfactory. And in fact, the uh, uh, majority of the construction were having uh, permanent deformation resistance, a proportional rutting depth lower than 5% and a wheel tracking slope in the range of 0.04 or 0.05 millimeter over 1,000 cycles. With regard to the production in paving, as I said, we have invited the contractors to use the infrared camera and to so that we could measure the temperature of the newly paved layer. Uh, with regard to the four construction, only one construction was done during the, during the day using a full width paver and using a feeder. The rest were paved during the night using a lane width paver and without a feeder. The temperature data were analyzed simply at this stage, only looking at the temperature distribution. To, do, to treat the data, we had to trim the data and, of course, highlight the pixel that are... Um, that belongs to the newly paved layer. And only these pixel or these temperature measurements were then evaluated uh, uh, with, this, uh, with, the, with the distribution algorithm. In particular, when we looked at the data, we could see that only the construction number five, which was the one paved during the day and using a feeder, had a very high percent of uh, newly paved surface within a, a gap of uh, 130 and 150 degrees C, and it was approximately 80 percent. When considering the construction number three and two, we can see with regard to the first that the relatively high percent of paving a paved surface was uh, paved within 150 and 160 degrees C. And this, given the properties of the mix, might lead, in, might lead into a higher risk of drain down problem. When uh, instead we looked at the construction number two, we saw that there were relatively high uh, percent of uh, area that was paved uh, at low temperature, and this might also give problems to achieve the desired density. When looking at the functionalities, we have measured mean profile depth, friction, and noise. 
and uh, we could see immediately that in the construction number three the MPD was very low and uh, this uh, as of course uh, uh, is the consequence of some challenges related to the mixed design and construction and as expected as given also problems with the friction in fact it was the only construction who did not meet the friction requirement while the rest of the constructions were satisfying the friction requirement as uh, uh, shown in the figure well, with regard to the MPD, the mean value uh, between all these uh, sections were around 0 0.5 millimeter, but uh, uh, the construction number two, for example, was a bit higher compared to the rest. With regard to the noise emission, uh, after one year of traffic, uh, the climate-friendly pavement the number two, the construction number two and number five, and as emission of about 90-90 p while a bit higher was uh, the emission measure on the construction number three, and it was about 100 dB. This is also related to the, uh, to the lower texture depth produced by that contractor. The construction number one instead has a, a, a dB of uh, 93.5, and this is only because that section was uh, measured at 60 kilometer per hour, because we could not drive at 80 or faster as in the other sections. Uh, we have evaluated, as I stated before, fuel consumption, and uh, we have measured fuel consumption on this section. And given the fact that uh, the measurement of fuel consumption is affected by many variables, the data were used uh, to um, to build a regression model that could that could correlate the mean profile depth, the texture depth with the fuel consumption. This model was used to estimate the initial expected uh, reduction in CO2 emission, and it was calculated to be approximately 1% reduction if compared to a standard stone mastic asphalt 11 and 0.4% if compared to a standard stone mastic asphalt 8. Of course, the mixed design of this climate-friendly pavement has been uh, uh, optimized, targeting not only a low texture, but also a durable texture. And we expect that this durable texture will increase the contribution in the reductions when considering the entire lifetime of the pavement. To conclude, uh, uh, we can say that uh, the climate-friendly uh, asphalt was uh, successfully paved by the majority of the contractors. And there was only one section which uh, did not meet uh, the friction requirement. Um, with regard to the differences in uh, surface properties uh, produced by the different uh, contractor, we can say that the production and of course, uh, uh, slightly the changes in the mix design had, uh, had a huge impact. Using the infrared camera, we could see that uh, the construction where a more even temperature was obtained also delivered a higher quality of the finished layer and also an optimal compaction degree. So it is very important and it's crucial for this pavement type to be, to, to be paved and produced under even temperature conditions. With regard to the fuel consumption measurement, it was possible to um, extrapolate a linear regression model that could correlate texture depth uh, and fuel consumption. And this model was used to estimate both the initial reduction, but also the reduction um, over the entire lifetime of a pavement. And uh, in this uh, specific case for a climate-friendly asphalt, where compared to stone mastic asphalt 11, the reduction over the entire lifetime is expected to be a around 1.5%, while when compared to stone mastic asphalt, it is expected to be 1.1. And this outcome is mainly given by the higher durability obtained by this mixed type. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome to ask me any question. Uh, thank you, Mateo, uh, for your interesting presentation. The second one is a reduction of the production and fabrication temperature of asphalt using viscosity reducing additive, result of 12 years of observation by Ulrich Lübbe. Ulrich Lübbe is a civil engineer with, a, with the following professional work experience. Signed 2009, is Permanent Managing Director in the Asphalt Laboratory, the PODT site manager from 2008 uh, to 8010 was branch manager and the PO of the test site manager of Sewerain branch. Also, he has professional experience as head of the material testing uh, working group, project manager for road and canal construction in engineering office for road and traffic planning, and as scientific assistant at the Institute of Road Engineering. I will give the floor to Ulrich. Ulrich, they are all yours. Dear ladies and gentlemen, 
First, I would like to say thank you for being a part of this special ENT Congress. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to present the results of our study within the scope of the Congress. The focus of our study was to ensure the requirements of health and safety respectively to improve the working conditions for the employees, both at the production plant and at the construction site, to use energy saving effects, to improve the mix, the paving, and the performance properties and to work according to the directive of mastic asphalt for use in Germany. For these reasons, the use of viscosity reducing additives was chosen. The study was divided into two parts. Part one contains the following steps. Selection of the suitable products, the asphalt mix design preparation was carried out depending on the particular product. The observation during the production and paving was done. Detailed investigation of the material properties, bitumen and metrological detections of the surface properties were made. And we made a structural assessment to have a reference level. And part two contains long-term observation in all eight years and the investigation of the bitumen properties at regular intervals. The following mixed types and viscosity reducing additives, respectively viscosity reduced bitumen were chosen for the study. A binder coarse asphalt with a minimum grading size of 16 millimeter and a stone mastic asphalt with a maximum grading size of 11 millimeter. Both asphalt mixes have been paved in the first and the second traffic line for the entire width. The long-term observation was conducted at one test track consisting of six sections, which was located in the north of Germany and Schleswig-Holstein between Flensburg and the north Ostsee Canal at the A7 motorway. Two mixing plants close by the test track were chosen to produce the asphalt mixture. These slides show some impressions during the asphalt layers paving. The left one shows the temperature reduced asphalt. The right one shows the reference section without reducing additives. I think the effect of fumes reduction due to reduced temperature with up to 30 degrees Celsius is clearly visible. This table presents the results of the bitumen test carried out using the example of the stone mastic asphalt of the reference section. In detail, the parameters, softening point ring and ball, needle penetration, DSR shear modulus and phase angle delta at 60 degrees and BBR stiffness and M value at 16 degrees Celsius were examined first for the fresh bitumen. After testing the fresh bitumen, the following steps included the short term and also the long term aging of the bitumen based on laboratory aging procedures. Then the test mentioned above were carried out again. The results describe the estimated aging properties of the bitumen. The long-term observation started in 2004, just after finishing the paving. At that time, the following and at regular intervals, the described tests were carried out at the extracted bitumen. The following charts show the behavior of selected parameters, e.g. needle penetration, shear modulus G star, and banding stiffness. Nearly all parameters show an expectably course during its lifetime. But most of the values determined in 2008 seems to be not plausible. So for the main evaluation, and interpretation, these values were not taken into account. The detailed description of the long-term 
behavior is given in the report. The summary of the bitumen tests is given in this table. The values describe the change in bitumen characteristics during work life. The minimum and maximum percentage change of the respective parameters and test section is highlighted. The detailed description and the interpretation are also published in the report. In this table, the evaluation of the visual condition detection respectively the surface condition is shown. For this, we use the German school grading system. One means good, no or little, and five means bad, many or strong. The values describe the condition for each parameter after in all eight years in use. The most visible damage occurred in material loss and in cracking at section number four. The other sections displayed no significant differences among themselves and also compared to the reference section. Here you can see some impressions of the test section without any visual damage after eight years in use. Compared to the previous, here some impressions of a damaged surface are shown, e.g. starting of cracks and material loss. And now I think the conclusions and recommendations will be of interest to you, so let me summarize. It is unerringly possible to mix, to pave, and to compact rolled asphalt by using viscosity-reducing additives with up to 30 Kelvin lower temperatures. It was clearly shown that temperature reduction reduces emissions of bitumen fumes and aerosols. Mixed design should be prepared by using performance tests to support the selection of suitable materials. The asphalt mix design is valid only for the particular bitumen. The compaction temperature of the martial specimens has to be determined according to the particular bitumen. And further, the use of waxes seems to be advantageously for the resistance, resistance against permanent deformations. The use of waxes leads to an increased softening point ring and ball of above 70 degrees Celsius. This effect should be taken into account for further investigations, e.g. use of RC asphalt. Long-term observations and detailed investigations of the extracted bitumen lead us to the conclusion that viscosity-reduced bitumen has similar aging properties in comparison to unadicized bitumen. When paving the temperature-reduced rolled asphalt, special attention must be paid to compaction. An increased roller insert should be planned. Overall, the assessment of the section's properties is positive. No significant disadvantages of the temperature reduced manufactured and paved rolled asphalts compared to the reference section were found. In some cases, the editized bitumen give even more favorable results than the reference section. And at least, the assessment remains positive after eight years of traffic. No significant deterioration, except very few examples in the visual inspection of occurred of occurrence of cracks has been detected. And today, after 12 years in use, the varying course of the test sections has been renewed because of increasing damage, mainly cracks, within the sections two, three, and four. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye. Thanks, Ulrich. Great presentation. The last one for this first block of presentation is an renewal of the payment of a very heavily traffic next German highway on the basis of an available model by Volker Software, paper 180. Mr. Volker is an engineer and selling employee, signed 2001. He, uh, with his own engineering office for the construction and maintenance of different areas, traffic, aircraft, operational areas, and ports, signed 2003, his official appointment and is known as a spare for asphalt construction in the field of traffic road engineering by the Underwood Chamber of Industry and Commerce. 
he has provided more than 100 publications and has given numerous presentations and lecture activity in the context of the national and international conference and congress. From 2005 to 2021, he has lectured for the lesson of contextual implementation and production and lying of asphalt of the Asphalt Technology Postgraduate Education Program in Germany. He started working in the sector in spring uh, 1986, stationed in his work where a company specialists in maintenance of asphalt pavement, such as surface dressing and thin asphalt layer at head of the construction technique and quality control department of a larger medium-sized company or road construction and production or raw material basis in northern Germany. Since 1991, composite comparison in expert committee on the Road and the Persons of Sales Association and the German Asphalt Pavement Association to contribute both experience and interest of the end user to adaptation of the technical rules and goals. I will give the floor to Volker. Volker, they are all yours. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the invitation to present our paper about the renewal of the pavement of a very heavy traffic German highway on the basis of an availability model. After a short introduction, I present you the in project overview and the site requirements and specific features, the structural concept, the implementation of the roadway construction and a short summary. This map shows you the motorway in Germany and uh, the violet color remarks the most heavy trafficked highways and motorways in Germany. It's in the north the BAB2 and in the south the BAB6. And as you'll see as the next picture, the BAB6 project is in the full length of the violet color. And the violet color stands for more than a daily load volume in each direction of more than 200,000 tons per day. And the result is a lot of congestion situations on the motorway. And also we have on the BAB6 more than 200 and 72 million equivalent standard excels in 30 years. Some data of the public private partnership model on the BAB 6 West, following to the availability model. The remuneration is based on the availability of the entire motorway. Uh, the costs are more than 1.3 billion euros, and uh, the project consists about financing, planning, construction, maintenance, and operation. And the duration is uh, about 30 years, starting in, at the beginning of 2017 with, this, with the construction time, which ends in June, end of June 2022. On this slide, you can see the construction and maintenance sections of this project. The project starts on the left side at the junction uh, wieslach Raunberg and ends at the motorway crossing uh, at Weinsberg. And uh, the gray color ma marked areas you can see are the maintenance sections and uh, the red ones are the construction sections. And uh, we have a very remarkable part of the project are uh, the new bridges for the Neckar Valley crossing. And uh, green marked, you can see um, all the sections with the porous asphalt in this project. The pavement concept consists about the complete reuse of all reclaimed materials in the project. We have a completely bound pavement structure. This was following to the German technical guideline of computational dimension by dimensioning the RDO asphalt. And uh, we had a very strong optimization process to get a very good construction and a very good uh, schedule reliability. On the list figure, you 
as you can see, the structure of the pavement uh, with um, stone matrix asphalt as uh, the surface course, uh, and a binder course, and here are the two layers paved in the, both the compact asphalt technique, and we have also two lower asphalt base courses and a stabilized layer, and uh, below the stabilized layer, uh, soil consolidation. The pavement with the porous asphalt consists with a 5.5 centimeter thick surface course of porous asphalt and a two centimeter thick waterproofing layer. And uh, below the waterproofing layer, a six centimeter asphalt binder course, also paved by the compact asphalt technique. The structural approach of this project was th that the application of the RDO asphalt wa was also on temporary and non-motorway pavements beside the A6 project. And we made a performance analysis of all asphalts to get a very good resistance to dem deformation, low temperature performance, resistance to fatigue and stiffness, and um, the asphalt performance data requirements had to follow a very strong demand. And the achievement of the performance data were more important than the traditional control tests. The, some specials about the structural features, the project deadlines led to numerous innovations, but no massive asphalt was carried out due to the, to the production in the unfavorable seasons. And instead we used the compact asphalt technology in all construction section, sections to increase a very good process reliability. The waterproofing layer under the first asphalt was made of dense asphalt concrete. And uh, we used in the first asphalt, uh, a new polymer modified bitume and the rock type moraine. The existing asphalt pavement is 100% reused in the new asphalt process. Uh, the average share of uh, reclaimed asphalt in the new pavement increased so from 45% to 60%. And we did a lot of things to uh, ensure a good quality. We had only plants with parallel drums of the latest generation, uh, which are characterized by a counterflow action with hot gas generator. And so we got a good uniform composition of the asphalt mixtures. The recalculations according to the RDO asphalt confirm that the finished pavement will resist the given load during 30 years operation period. The performance properties partly exceed assumed properties from other projects. The CPX measure measurements confirm compliance with noise reduction in, in all sections, uh, also to porous asphalt as the stone mastics asphalt. In totally, we used uh, more than 850,000 tons asphalt, of which consists more than 550,000 tons of reclaimed asphalt. We saved more than 3,000 tons of CO2, and we reduced the laying temperatures in the asphalt by laying the porous asphalt with temperatures of 130 degrees, and uh, we reduced uh, the temperature by laying the compact asphalt the pavements by 20, more than 20 degrees, up to 140 degrees since the last year. Let me summarize. We had uh, a very exciting project, the public-private partnership of the BAB6 West. Uh, we have uh, an asphalt pavement according to the latest findings of uh, loads for the next 30 years of about uh, 272.6 million 10 ton X loadings. 
100% of the existing pavement was used in the new pavement. We had a consistent expectation of the computational dimensioning with very good conformity between calculation and practice. We used very intensive the compact as well technique and uh, the surface as crosses are, are made of stone mastics asphalt or porous asphalt. We had made more than a dozen innovations in this project and we have got a good resistance to deformation using dense and fatigue resistant asphalt courses with high content of reclaimed asphalt. So we expect a low maintenance, robust and CO2 reduced asphalt pavement for the next 30 years. Thank you for your attention. Welcome to the third question, Anna Suasensia. Please, Mateo, Ulrich, and Volker, open your camera. Thank you for sending us all your questions. The speaker of this first block is a happy to always then. The first question is to... One moment. The first question is para, for Mateo. Uh, has analysis economic or ALCR been done on the low rolling resistant pavement? In a particular, I'm wondering if the Roth agency is willing to pay higher costs for payment with environmental benefits? Should I go? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Francisco. Uh, yes, we did, uh, we did a lot of analysis on, uh, on the economic side because we know that uh, producing these mixes have an increase in cost. And we have seen already in 2020 and 2021 that compared to standard stone mastic asphalate, the increase in cost is in a range of 7%. This increasing cost uh, is uh, we have looked into the break-even point. So assuming that this type of payment reduces rolling resistance, we also assume and calculate the reduction in uh, fuel consumption. So knowing the amount of cars that drive on uh, specific sections and calculating the difference compared to what you would have from a standard pavement, then you can basically evaluate when is the break-even point, where the additional price you pay at the beginning get uh, to zero. And, 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 and then we found out that it depends on the amount of traffic, but is happening on most of the cases uh, when uh, before the end of the lifetime. We also have to consider that from our experiment, this type of mix has a longer durability. So if you want to assume that the standard stone massic asphalate used in Denmark has a lifetime of 15 years, we have seen that this pavement can definitely last longer. So even if you want to divide the price for production for the number of years that you expect the pavement to be last, then the price per year that you pay for each layer is uh, even comparable to a standard mix. But we have done a lot of studies on, uh, on this economic before we have decided to approach it on, yeah. a, on a national scale level. Interesting, interesting topic, Mateo. Very interesting. Yeah, it's, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, last, the next question is for, for Ulrich. Uh, should we better use a softer bitumen with waste to avoid low temperature problems? What was the main type of crust after 12 years in replay section? Okay, um, the first question, the use of softer bitumen. I think this depends on the special conditions of the project. Is this uh, possible? to use both variants, to use waxes in a softer bitumen and to use uh, waxes in a, for example, a PMB is a higher viscosity uh, base bitumen. Um, this depends on the, on the special conditions. If you have a um, bus stop, maybe you can, can use a, a, a not, a, a, higher viscose uh, bitumen. And if you have uh, cold climatic conditions, uh, I think it's better to use a softer bitumen as a base bitumen. So um, you have a lot of uh, possibilities to, to um, create your modified bitumen and uh, it depends on the special conditions. It's a simple way. And the main type of cracks, the uh, second question, um, the main types was uh, transverse cracks on the named test sections and undirected cracks. So this both uh, 
crack types were um, observed after 12 years. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, next question is uh, to Volker. Uh, for the quantity of the ton of apple uh, uh, produced, additional 600 ton of CO2 saving will be possible if based on the Securant records. You could, you, will you consider GTR as a feasible contribution to your goals? A highly routine resistant high with longer lifetime will be included? Um, well, I do not understand really what's uh, made in GTR. <laughs> Um, can you give me an explanation? Because I never heard it before. I believe. I so the for, letters. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. is the name of this 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 uh, acronym. Yeah, I don't know it also. So I could not uh, give the right answer. Okay. Well, I I I have, I, I have a question for you. Uh, uh, what type of a new bitumen did you use in the formulation of the recycled mices to recover the characteristics of the aged bitumen? But, uh, well, we used uh, normal, uh, in the base course, normal standard bitumen, uh, like uh, uh, 50, 70 uh, degrees, or in the um, uh, asphalt binder, we use uh, um, especially a, a really higher modified, polymer modified bitumen, um, and to combine it with the, the reclaimed asphalt, and we get very good results. Uh, uh, oh, yes, now uh, the, the, uh, I can give the uh, answer to the question, ground uh, uh, tire rubber GTR. Okay, thank you uh, for the addition. Um, uh, we use, uh, my experience uh, is uh, for in, uh, using polymer modifier bitumen uh, in, in the asphalt courses. So we have a good, good and a very uh, long uh, Experiences with it, uh, so rubber tires uh, between uh, I have not so much experience, and I don't expect uh, a better behavior than uh, we have uh, already with polymer modified bitumen. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next question is uh, to Matteo uh, from Christian Torena. Is say uh, thank you for your inspiring presentation. I also heard Steve Phillips, Secretary General of CRDL, in the opening session telling how important rolling resistance is. How can we stimulate national road authority to start reducing the road's user energy consumption by applying low ro uh, rolling resistance pavement? Thank you. I think this is also an interesting question and I agree that uh, there is a need to, to focus on this topic and the need uh, should be also uh, addressed by looking at the way we measure it. We need to measure these properties on the road because, because by measuring you can get a feeling of what is the impact of the road properties on, uh, on fuel consumption. So in my mind, it's missing like a standard uh, committee, for example, that tries to standardize measurement of fuel consumption on road and implement it that is valid and usable and everyone can refer to. So it, it is a need to, to start looking into these properties because also I feel is one of the property of a road which can be easily communicated to politicians, to, to the Ministry of Transportation, when they ask you, what is the condition of your infrastructure? You can refer to something that everyone will understand. If you instead keep saying IRI, texture, depth, or whatever, I mean, politicians don't understand if the payment is good or not. But if you start to give some numbers which have a social impact, then I'm quite sure that they will understand the importance of doing maintenance and proper maintenance. So we need to work on uh, standards. We need to work on uh, standardized methods and we need to, and to make accessible all these information. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, the next question is for Ulrich. Uh, could crystalline uh, fissantor ways have a negative influence on the elasticity of modified bitumen? Oh, is this a question on the... For me, it's for me. <laughs> it's for you, okay, so I haven't read it. Uh, could you repeat it, please? Yes, 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 yes. Could crystalline uh, fissantor ways have a negative influence on the elasticity of modified bitumen in the different uh, track section? If the waxes have a negative impact... Yeah. Yeah. What's your, what your opinion about this? As, uh, uh, some some products have a negative impact on the on the cracks. Uh, this was visible in the section 
two, three, and four, I, I think. And um, I don't exactly know what the what, uh, reason is for this uh, phenomenon, but uh, the, some, some um, damage uh, is caused, I think, of the use of waxes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Volker, the, the name of the acronym is uh, ground tie rubber. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the question is, uh, would you consider ground uh, tie to rubber as a feasible contribution to your goals and highly rating resistant with lower lifetime will be included in your project? Yes, uh, I gave the answer before, but um, uh, when I read uh, the acronym, um, but I saw here, I see here another question. Uh, whether performance testing was uh, used uh, for uh, only for type testing or as well as for quality control. And I can say we used it for both for uh, type testing and also for quality control as, uh, uh, as you have probably mentioned in my uh, presentation about the figure uh, where I, uh, you can see the, uh, the clearly re the results and good results we, we got from the uh, quality control. Okay. Well, thank you for your question and as well. Very interesting. If any question remain and un as well, it is possible to ask where then in the networking area of the E2021 platform. Thank you so much for our your contribution. Okay. Go to the next, the second block, the presentation is the following. The first one is about the design and development of new bituminous mixture, based on waste recovery to be used as the main component of, of slab tram in urban tram lanes, paper 192 by my Spanish colleague, Mr. Rafael Martinez. The affiliation and job title of Mr. Rafael Martinez is for research and development project coordinator and master degree in science of chemistry. He's member of the Southern College of Chemistry and Spanish National Association on Chemists. His main roles and responsibility in his job are coordination of projects in cooperation with national and international company partners, preparation and maintenance of projects, plans, and monitoring of project progress and preparing reports for clients or project stakeholders. His hobbies are football, tennis, traveling, and technical reading. I will, I will give the floor to Rafa. Rafa, they are all yours. Hello and good afternoon to all attendees. This is Rafael Martinez from IFAS. First of all, uh, I would like to, to give thanks to the seventh e and &E Congress Technical Committee for this opportunity and also congratulate to all people and companies involved in, in this event. Well, in, in this presentation, I'm going to, to try to show you the most important ideas and the main aspects of one a, a fast R&D project, which is called B2TRAN. Well, the, the, the main objective of B2TRAN was the development uh, of a slab track system aiming to uh, reducing vibrations on, on tram lines. This slab tracks was, was built exclusively with an asphalt mix, which include uh, recycled materials, in this case, uh, plastic waste, so uh, we can say that uh, B2TRAN is a ballastless system uh, for, for trans. In order to achieve that objective, a work plan uh, was set, was divided in different steps. In a first step, the, the, the optimum asphalt mix uh, was defined at a laboratory level, and the dimension of the cross sections uh, were calculated using an adapted uh, finite element uh, model. In the second step, a pilot section was, was built and its dynamic behavior was evaluated based uh, on the vibrations induced by, by the trunks. Finally, or well, in the final step, and to close the cycle, with the result obtained uh, at full scale, the finite element model was calibrated and validated. Well, regarding the optimum asphalt mix, three fundamental aspects were considered. Firstly, the, the vibration uh, mitigation capacity. 
the durability and strength requirements, and also obviously be economically be able. Thus, let me say, after uncountable trials based mainly in the phase angle and the elastic module test results, uh, a stone mastic asphalt, maximum size 16, with a, with a 0.5% in recycled plastics, was considered as the, as the optimum one. The next step was to, to design the, the crock sections, calculating the, the optimal thickness uh, layer for, for each material to ensure the, the good behavior of the infrastructure along its useful life and obviously to, to minimize construction costs. Uh, the thinness calculation was carried out according to fatigue requirements and uh, the materials, mechanical properties considered as summarized uh, in, the present, in the present table. Well, in, in the last proposed crop sections that we can see in this slide on the right, uh, uh, 40, 45 centimeters thickness of asphalt mix laid on, on 20 centimeters of a granular subbase was established uh, as the optimum uh, crop section. Well, uh, at this point, uh, a pilot section of, of about uh, 30 meters length was built. In this case, uh, this pilot section was, was located or was built next to a cement concrete uh, slab track in order to compare the dynamic behavior of both sections. In, in this slide, you can see some, some details of the works uh, carried out, like for example, the subway compaction, the asphalt slab track uh, execution, and also the, finally, the, the, the rails in installation. Once the pilot section was built, a monitoring campaign was carried out using three ECLs uh, accelerometers that were placed at 0.2 and 0.7 meters from the, from the rails. Thus, uh, accelerations induced by the trans were obtained. Well, as, as we can see in, in, in the table, when comparing the, the results, it can be observed a 58% reduction in, in both peak acceleration or maximum accelerations and a very accelerations. Therefore, uh, the vibration attenuating uh, capacity of the asphalt slab tracks was confirmed. Uh, already once obtained uh, results were analyzed, we calibrate the finite element model with the acceleration records at the point uh, 20 centimeters on the left. And finally, with the uh, acceleration records at the point uh, seven, uh, sorry, uh, 70 centimeter, we were able to validate the finite element model uh, because, as you can see on the right graph, uh, the magnitude and the time distribution of both peaks, the calculated one and the measured one, uh, match, let me say, uh, accordingly, uh, if not perfectly. Well, uh, in, in conclusions, b 2 is an economically be able and durable solution, which at the, at the same time contribute to circular economy and is environmentally friendly. So uh, let me say that b 2 is a successful non-high weight application of asphalt mixes. To finalize this presentation, uh, I would like to give thanks to all entities and partners involved on in the b project. And obviously, thanks to, to all of you for, for your attention. Uh, I hope this presentation was useful for you, at least useful for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, really. Thanks. Thanks, Rafa. Excellent presentation. The following presentation will be made by Dr. Miguel Sol Sanchez about bituminous material for railway engineering, paper 375. 
Dr. Miguel Sol is Assistant Professor in Construction Engineering in the Department of Civil Engineering Construction and Engineering Project at the University of Granada. Teaching site 2017, Doctor in Civil Engineering and equity to acquire the outstanding doctoral thesis prize in the period 2014-2015. Master in Geology for, uh, Geology for Civil Engineering. Dr. Sol Sanchez has collaborated in 13 national research projects three of them as principal research and two European projects. He has taken part in 18 research contracts with different company administration. As a result, he has 53 publications in international journals with 66 of them in the first quaternile. In addition, he's author of 10 bo uh, book charter. Uh, he has participated in more than 40 international conference, been an invited lecturer in 10 of them. Dr. Sol Sanchez has directed one doctoral thesis in, and is currently supervising for other this. He's a reviewer in various international journal and editor in chief for the journal sustainability. In addition, he has collaborated in the organization and as a lecturer in multiple courses for research and experts, while also being invited as a professor for various courses at both national and international university. I will give the floor to Miguel. Miguel, they are all yours. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to thank the organization of the Congress for the big effort, particularly in this hard period. And also, I'd like to thank the chairman of this session for his contribution. Well, this presentation focuses on the study of bituminous materials for the application in railway tracks, particularly assessing the potential benefits of using high performance binders and asphalt mixtures to be applied as bituminous subballast. This is the content of the presentation. And starting with the introduction, we all know that there are diverse politics and guidelines to increase the traffic in railway track because of a series of benefits. But such increase, we must consider the cool demand for the improvement of the bearing capacity of all tracks while also demanding for the improvement of the design of future lines to support such traffic increase without increasing the demand for maintenance. But the question is, how can we do that? Well, from previous laboratory studies that we carry out in our laboratory through full scale tests, we saw that the stiffness of the superstructure played an essential role on the global track. Particularly, we saw that the use of stuffed substructure could reduce the need for maintenance by reducing the trend to settlement. Also, we saw that the application of bituminous subballast allowed for increasing the bearing capacity of the substructure and therefore increasing the global track stiffness and demanding for lower maintenance. Also, with this solution, we must consider that we could reduce up to a half the thickness of the subballast layer and therefore reducing the consumption of natural aggregates. Also, at the left, in yellow color, we can see that with the application of bituminous subballast, we could reduce the stress transmitted to the sublayers up to a half, while at the left and at the right, we can see that with bituminous solution, we could reduce the trend to settlement. In this sense, this study aims to improve even more the varying capacity of the superstructure while increasing the durability of the bituminous sufalas for the widespread application of these solutions. Particularly through a national research project in Spain, in collaboration with partners like CEPSA, Cies Interia, and LABIC UGR at the University of Granada, we are focused on developing high performance binders and bituminous materials for improving the mechanical behavior and durability of bituminous subballast for railway tracks. For that, in this initial, labora in this initial laboratory study, we focus on analyzing the performance of three asphalt mixtures. One of reference, commonly used when applied bituminous subballast in railway tracks, composed of a dense mixture with similar design to that used for base layers in road pavements, 
and including a conventional binder. As alternative solutions, we analyze on the one hand a high performance asphalt, including an improved sustainable bitumen. And on the other hand, we analyze the effect of using an alternative mid-charge type. For more detail, the high performance asphalt was similar to the reference, but varying the bitumen. In this case, we use a crown rubber modified low penetration bitumen, allowing for increase the stiffness and elasticity of this material. On the other hand, the alternative mixture was a stone mastic asphalt, an anti-cracking asphalt, since this failure mode is one of the main limitations for the widespread application of bituminous subballast in railway tracks. This mixture was composed of a modified binder, binder with crown rubber and polyethylene, and also including fibers in order to increase the content of bitumen. To characterize the performance of the three mixtures, on the one hand, we carry out traditional tests measuring properties like density, airport content, Marshall test, water sensitivity, and stiffness modulus at 20 degrees. And on the other hand, to analyze the performance of this solution for the application, the specific application in railway tracks, we carry out a specific tests like the punching test, analyzing the resistance to plastic deformation, simulating the real contact between the ballast aggregates and the bituminous subballast layers. And also we carry out the UGR fat test to analyze the resistance to fatigue cracking. Well, passing to the results, here first we can see that both alternatives presented lower Marshall stability, but still presenting appropriate strength for the application as bituminous subalas in railway tracks. And also we can see that these alternatives allow for increased the resistance to plastic deformation and the resistance to moisture damage. Also, here we can see that both alternatives allow for increasing the stiffness of the material and then expecting to increase the bearing capacity of the substructure, particularly when using the high performance asphalt and therefore expecting to reduce the need for maintenance. Also, here we can see that both alternatives allow for reducing the trend to deformation under punching efforts. Particularly, we saw that at the end of the test, the solution allow for deformation up to half in comparison with the reference. Also, from the UGR fat test, here we can see that both alternatives allow for increase the fatigue life of the layer, particularly when using the high performance asphalt with the crown rubber low penetration bitumen. And in this sense, when analyzing the life of the of the solution for different thicknesses of the layer, in comparison with the reference, we can see that with the high performance binder, we could reduce up to a half the thickness of this bituminous layer in comparison with the reference. Well, passing to the conclusion from the results of this study, we can say that the use of high performance binder and asphalt mixture could increase the bearing capacity of the substructure, reducing the trend to settlement and increasing the protection of the sublay. Particularly, we saw that the use of the crown rubber low penetration bitumen allowed for the higher benefits, increasing the resistance to punching deformation and increasing the fatigue life of the material. Particularly, we saw that with this solution, we could reduce the thickness of the bituminous subballast in comparison with the conventional bituminous subballast commonly used. Nonetheless, for the application of this solution, future work are required. In this sense, we are now focusing on analyzing the structural performance of the alternative bituminous solutions by using an innovative test, simulating at the same time the combination of traffic loads at the top of the layer 
and simulating different supports at the bottom by varying the varying capacity of the supports and also varying the trend to settlement and therefore simulating different soils. Also, we are analyzing the inclusion of sensors into the bituminous solution in order to analyze the functionality of this solution to uh, detect the traffic load and also detect some the state of the truck. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Miguel. And the last one of that will be by Nak Johansen, reevaluating of trunk building with a system of combining polymer and hilsonite modification, paper 414. Mr. Nak started his career 1999, working on privately owned accredited laboratory of rock construction in the north of Germany. And in 2011, he became technical director of Eurovia Germany. He has a master in engineering and also a master degree for Dresden Technical University. He is currently chairing the technical committee of IAPA and the IF, German Alpha Association. I will give the floor to NAC. NAC, they are all for you. Hello. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about the experience uh, of a system we developed for high traffic pavements. So traffic pav uh, pavements which um, are prone to permanent deformation, especially like bus stations or container terminals. And we developed a system uh, more than 10 years ago, which um, consists of a natural asphalt modification. A natural asphalt um, is mainly consisting out of asphaltines, so it's more or less pure asphaltines, which you add to your binder at high temperatures and they totally dissolve in the binder. And this is a total natural product, so uh, the chemical composition of the binder does not really change. So um, what is the main effect of a natural asphalt modification? You can see that here in the graph that the model is testing of an AC16. And you see that it shifts the stiffness up over the whole temperature range, especially above 20 degrees. So on the right side for the high temperature, you see that's a positive effect as it probably decreases permanent deformation. And in the same moment, you have also the increase on the left side on the low temperature side, which you have to take into account as to prevent cracking coming from cryogenic stresses. So that's the reason why we normally do that modification only in binder and base courses and not in the wearing course. For the wearing course, we have a different solution, which consists of a high polyfilm modified binder in order to have a very elastic, um, wearing cause to prevent cracking, to prevent open joints or seams, and mainly to prevent water pouring into the pavement. So we looked at three different tracks, which we built years ago. This is the first one. This is um, the exit um, of the highway A42 in the west of Germany. And when you look at the right picture, you can see the bridge on the left side. And the bridge is the, the highway crossing the local road system. And uh, so the track we're looking at here is 150 meters long. And um, so it has a slope of more than 4%. On the left side, you see the truck going uphill, very steep. And on the right, you see the cars coming down downhill. And normally they have to stop at the traffic lights there. So they're coming with high speeds and have to stop to zero. So we made uh, a permanent deformation measurement and unevenness measurement on the right side coming up right down to the traffic lights. You see the results here on the right side. Um, you see that the permanent deformation is very low. It's below, well below four millimeters. It's not even really visible outside. And um, we also did um, a visual inspection of the whole track and um, it really looks very well. No cracks, no open joints and um, very small amount of cracked aggregates and um, so very, very good behavior. Second track we looked at was a bus station uh, right next um, to that uh, first track, the same city. Uh, when you look at the right picture again, in the, the back on the left side, there's the railway station of the city. So this is a bus hub where a lot of lines uh, are connecting. And um, so they have uh, several hundred bus stops here on the right side on that lane. It was renewed um, seven years ago. Um, and we looked at that and also did unevenness measurements there. 
And uh, we found a quite uh, funny picture there. We see that on the right side, the blue bars uh, show the left wheel path and the orange ones, the right wheel path. And you see that there was significant deformation on the left side, on the left wheel path, up to 28 millimeters, which is still okay. It can still operate there without any problems. But the funny thing is that it's totally different on the left and the right wheel path. Um, we were not really able to find um, the reasons for that as we were not able to, to take any course there and do any additional binder tests. Uh, but I talked to the guy who, who was there seven years ago and so built that and uh, he told me that there might be um, different um, thicknesses of the bearing cost there as they had problems outside uh, the construction site when they built that. So probably, most probably the bearing cost on the left side has a higher thickness than on the right side, which could be the reason for this plastic deformation. Um, there are other bus stops right there, um, which are built in uh, with paving blocks. And uh, at the same time, and uh, they, after seven years, are more or less destroyed in the view path. So the blocks are damaged and cracked. So that was a really good solution in asphalt there. You can see on the left side uh, what we built there, the pavement system and an AC8 with the high polymer modified binder and the AC22 with 30% of wrap addition. The last um, area we looked at um, is a production facility um, where they build these uh, steel pipes, which you can see on the left side. Um, so they uh, have uh, steel pipes constructed there um, uh, of about 400 in a day. Each one weighs 16 tons and they use reach stackers to operate to handle these pipes, sometimes two of them at the same moment. So these reach stackers have axle loads of up to 100 tons, static axle loads, and the dynamic axle load uh, comes on top of that. Uh, you see the rear axle of such a reach stack on the right picture. What you also see there is a crack, and um, that's the only significant distress you can find in that area. Um, you can see some cracks, mainly where the reach stacker has to operate and stop. So normally it goes backwards uh, 10 meters, then it stops and then takes a curve and then goes uh, on forward in forward mode. And these are the areas where most of the cracks are. The cracks are not really straightforward, um, so not very typical for reflective cracking, although we cannot totally rule that out. Um, here we have uh, a pavement system consisting of an AC22 with a natural asphalt modification and an AC32 as a base layer, also with a natural asphalt modification both on the base of a 5070 penetration grade bitumen and both with 30% of wrap. You can see the, um, the softening points um, some, so below 80 degrees, which is quite hard. So we cannot really rule out that there's reflective cracking, but um, as I said, it does not really look like that and it's mainly in the stress areas. So, um, to conclude that, uh, after 10 years, that's a real good uh, situation there. They have no trouble operating the area. And um, so we are quite satisfied with the system. We built a system of this combination with the natural asphalt modified binder base layers and the high polymer modified varying courses for more than 10 years now with very good um, experiences, especially where we have high loads like buses like uh, on container terminals with reach stackers or something like that. Okay, thank you for your attention. Welcome to the second question, Asba Sensia, Rafa, Miguel, and Nak. Welcome. Uh, the third question is to uh, Rafa. Uh, the question is, what is the expected durability before major maintenance and real immense? of the proposed solution compared to alternatives? Well, let me say that is a difficult, a difficult question. Um, we will see, we will see really. Uh, according to the calculation, really, uh, or the theoretical calculation, we estimated also a lifespan of uh, 50 years. And we take into account the, the, the potential traffic level, okay? But uh, what I can say to you is that right now, after eight, uh, eight years, all these slab tracks uh, don't need any maintenance operations. 
Okay, thank you so much, Rafa. We will see in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question is for Miguel. Uh, assuming that the, the HPA binder has a higher initial cost, additional bitumen, did you perform any life cycle cost analysis for comparing world life performance? Right. Thank you for your question, Dr. Tangelo. Uh, first, you are totally right that with this solution, we could increase the, the cost initially. Nonetheless, we must also consider that with this solution, we could reduce considerably the thickness of the layer in comparison with the granular solution. And also, uh, we must consider that the, uh, mm, the granular solution commonly use high quality aggregates as sometimes the distance for that solution, for that aggregate could be very long and therefore the cost of the granular solution could be higher than with the bituminous solution. Nonetheless, as you are right, that maybe the cost of the environmental issues can be a problem. We are right now carrying out the uh, life cycle uh, analysis, the environmental and economical cost, analyzing the potential benefits according to theory that it was seen from pre previous studies that when increasing the bearing capacity of the structure, we could reduce the trend to settlement and therefore the trend to maintenance in the future. And also we are carrying out the life cycle analysis considering data from our laboratory through full scale tests, analyzing the potential benefits of using this solution to reduce the need for maintenance, so the need for tamping, stabilizer in the future. So we are working right now on that. Okay, thank you so much, Miguel. Okay, the next question is to NAC. Uh, there are several questions about Hilsonit. Uh, the question is, what is the process of incorporating the Hilsonit into the bitumen and complex process? Is a Hilsonite a commercial product? And are there special requirements on the natural asphalt? Um, okay, thanks for the question. So I would like to start with the last one, as they may have an influence on the first one. Um, so the question is, um, is there, are there special requirements on the natural asphalt? I would say the first thing is that natural asphalt has a rigid ball of above 100. So it's very important um, to have a homogeneous product in the end, so that uh, the ring and ball is stable of the product because you added a very small amounts and that can have a major influence. On it. So homogeneity, in my opinion, is the first point there. Um, so there are a lot of different products existing around the world so you can get it from different sources from uh, America, the Middle East, and wherever you want to. Um, so I would have a look at it. And the second deals, my second recommendation deals with the way of, um, of modifying. So you can modify the bitumen or you can use a dry process directly to the asphalt. And uh, so when you want to modify a bitumen, you have to take very much care of the insoluble, so the inorganic amount. So um, as if there is a lot of inorganic amount, which can reach up to 60% or more in some products, um, then you cannot really, um, you cannot really modify a bitumen because you have a problem with all the inorganic amount in there. So I would say that that could be the second requirement of the product. Okay. Thank you, Nak. The next question is uh, to Rafa. Uh, how can it heterogeneate in the tratamento of plastics in recycled plant influence in the homogeneity of the type of binder or mixture that we want to produce? Probably you know more than me about this, but uh, I think it's very high. Anyway, when you when you use recycled plastic, you can find um, many kind, many types of uh, of different recycled plastic. You have uh, plastic from, coming from different origins, with different natura, with different homogeneity. So even you can find uh, recycled plastic. Uh, uh, with different, with a big different price from uh, 20 euros to, to 900 euros. So, uh, I, in yeah. our opinion, in our opinion, the influence is, is very high. Uh, as, as far as I know, 
we use it for example we we, we try at that time even with cran rubber and for example uh, the the difference between cran rubber or other plastics other polymers uh, are very different in the results okay thank you the next question is for to miguel Will there be any benefits achieved by using a bit of bone ballast in combination with the bone sub layers? This question comes from Giancomo, D'Angelo. Well, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, to be honest, I have no idea of the potential benefits because we haven't tested that. Mm -hmm. What we have done is to test the the bituminous solutions for the sub separately, seeing the potential benefits of this solution. And also in previous uh, projects, we analyzed the bone ballast with bituminous solution. Uh, and we saw that with this uh, granular material with the bitumen, it could reduce considerably the trend, the trend to settlement, particularly when using, for example, maintenance techniques like the stone blowing. The benefits were quite positive, but we haven't proved it uh, combining both solutions. So we have no, no a real answer for that separately. They are working good, but we haven't tested still the, the combined solution. We expected okay. that it could be positive, but we haven't tested it. Okay, thank you. And the phase is to, to prove this, your, your solution in a real practice. Yes, uh, okay. okay. The next question is for uh, NAC. Uh, how thin were the asphalt layer designed for race teacher surface? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Koya, thanks for the question. Um, uh, you have to know that Koya operates a container terminal, which, which is very, very big and has a lot of traffic, so we're very interested in that thicknesses. Um, so you cannot really compare the two of them. So the one we looked at was a very small one, only one rich stack that was operating on that whole pavement. So you cannot really compare that. We had quite low thicknesses, which were more or less like, like a standard pavement. Like So I would say it was about 24 centimeters. I'm not exactly sure at the moment, but you cannot really compare that to what you are operating. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is for uh, Rafa. Um, uh, the question is, uh, one moment, please. Uh, Rafa. Ah, yeah. Uh, were there any problems, experience with missing a compartment of the difference misses in the, in the transaction? No, no, no. Nothing remarkable. Missing a compaction like other alpha physics. Let me say that the total thickness of the, of the slab track was uh, 45 uh, centimeters. But even uh, this was executed in, uh, I remember, I think, seven different layers applying uh, attack core between, between, between them, okay? So for compaction, um, for missing a compaction, the, the thing that no other found me. It, it was done by the dry process. The, the plastic uh, polymers were added uh, in the production by the dry process directly to the to the asphalt mixer, and uh, obviously the is is it's very crucial in this in this case the, the maximum size of the of the plastic. So uh, we use it the, the 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 minimum one that we that we can at that time. So, but for compaction, I'm missing like uh, like another one. Okay, thank you. And the question is to Miguel. Um, in your presentation, you saw how the performance of the track is improved by using bituminous misses. Is the modulus of thinness one of the fundamental parameters that should characterize bituminous misses for right wall track to be last? Uh, well, mm, the answer is yes. The stiffness modulus is a fundamental property for the bituminous balance for any bituminous material. Nonetheless, we must not forget other essential properties like the fatigue life or uh, other characteristics like the punching resistance. In this case, we must consider that the bituminous ballast is under the ballast layer. So 
is a good parameter that we also start analyzing that, but also we carry out a specific test to evaluate the bearing capacity, for example, the capacity to dissipate stress, the uh, influence in fatigue life. So this is a good parameter that uh, the other answer, the other question is uh, other types of aggregates. Sí. We could analyze different types of aggregates. In fact, right now in the project, we are analyzing mm -hmm. other different types of bitumen, but also other different types of combination of aggregates. So we are analyzing different types of mixture with different aggregates and different type of bitumen in order to analyze the, the influence of every, every variable. Okay, thank you, Miguel. The last one for NAC. Uh, uh, the question is, uh, could it be that the difference in the modulus extended between the surface cores and the binder cores could have influenced the plaxis deformation detective in some areas of the session that you have indicated in your presentation? Well, yeah, the, the question is, is, is very good. So it's, it's like uh, be between the rock and the hard place, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you have to keep in mind that um, the surface layer was quite small. We had three centimeters in thickness. And uh, also the, the, the binder of the surface layer had a softening point of around 90 degrees. So um, theoretically, yes, I would say in this case, no, as we know that we had some problems in, in the binder layer. With yeah, the not that after I have to think that is so I would uh, say that it, it, it originated uh, uh, from the other. Uh, one one moment. Please. Um, Sure. Move your, your, your phone, uh, please, Volker. Okay, Nak, can you continue, please? Okay. Sure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, we don't have more, more questions for the, the audience. Uh, uh, we have only two minutes to end the session. Uh, for example, I, I, I prepared a question for, for Rafa. Uh, the question is, what is the best way to incorporate recycled plastic into asphalt misses? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> well, uh, both of them, I think, sometimes uh, it's a question, imagine for example, Frank, that you have a, a in my opinion, you have an asphalt plant, the location of, of asphalt plant yeah. is very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the, 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 the wet process is best, is better, probably, usually, probably. Uh, and sometimes, do you, do, do you need to, to, to try improve the bitumen or the asphalt mix in the, in the dry process? No, adding these plastics uh, uh, on site or in the asphalt plant. So, I don't know, but uh, this question is for something special. Or... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the other aspect important is the, the composition of the plastic, no? It's a factor important. Probably, yeah. The compatibility with the, with the binder. Okay. Okay, for me, uh, I don't have more questions uh, about your presentation. Amazing presentation. Thank you much to all the presenters for their interesting presentation. Thank you all for participating. I hope you like it, the different presentation. If any question remain, ask what it uh, is possible to answer them in the network area of the EE2021 platform. Continue to enjoy the virtual European Asphalt Congress. For me, bye bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>